Welcome to the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast, where our mission is to help you learn and grow by sharing the tips, ideas, tricks, and more that we learn from speaking with top producing real estate agents around the country every single day. I'm Matt Benelli here with Ninja Coaching founder and owner Garrett Fry. And although we focus a lot on real estate, this podcast is not just for real estate agents. It is for anyone who is looking to better their business and increase their income per hour in order to enjoy all of the things that life has to offer. So prepare to take in a lot of value that you can put into action in your business and your life. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everybody, to another fantastic episode of Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast. Garrett and Matt here again. And before we go into the topic, I just want to remind everybody to please drop some reviews. Some of you have been putting them in there and we love them. Oh, my goodness. Garrett, I'm feeling I'm feeling like warm and fuzzy about some of the stuff that people are writing. But just a reminder to you guys, put your name, your location. Next episode, we are going to start shouting people out because we want to acknowledge you guys because without you, without you guys out there working your business and serving people, we wouldn't have this great podcast to share with all of y'all. So really appreciate you guys doing that. Garrett, anything else I should add about that? I mean, I'm feeling warm and fuzzy. How about you? Well, no. So I, I, I love the way you said warm and fuzzy because then I was going like, oh, this is kind of funny because it kind of ties into what we're going to talk about today. But the reviews that are being sent in right now are absolutely wonderful. They make, again, it just it just drives me and drives Matt uh, to want to be better and to continue to provide to you guys because uh, because without hearing that, we're just in a room. Matt's in his room over there and the, on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast and we're recording and putting these things out. So to know that it's affecting people, to know that they're getting what you know the enjoyment out of it and wins out of it. Um, you know, makes us want to continue to wake. Well, me wake up early, Matt wake up in the afternoon, and uh, <laughs> and and record. So, thank you so much. Please bring them in. And again, our goal is we want to acknowledge and say thank you and give a little shout out. And we're going to pick one every single week um, or every time we do a podcast to uh, to put out there. So, yeah, that that's what I'd like to share. But it does lead into our topic today. It does. It does because. Everybody gets a trophy. Well, almost. <laughs> but it, but it goes here's and here's what's fun is is that it does feel good. Like it just as we're talking about these acknowledgments and what people are sharing with us, there is a side of it that feels good. But this came out of Matt. You brought up the topic of you know we're in award season right now. I've talked to so many agents that have said, "Hey, we had our award bank banquet last night, and uh, oh my gosh, it took forever." To go through all the awards, I'm hearing that from multiple people. <laughs> but it is it it is a part that every business does, and it's a thing that realtors do get satisfaction out of. But let's talk about it. like I'm excited to talk about like what is the point behind it? Where are the traps that kind of come up with with those awards, and how can it be really beneficial, but also sometimes not beneficial yeah. to the people. Yeah. And Garrett, I want to add on to that. I've been thinking, I was thinking of this as you were talking about kind of everybody going to all these awards banquets and it's just like, oh man, there's so many, but also like, what are other ways that brokerages can acknowledge their agents beyond just awards and things like that? But let's start, let's start with the awards because I, we've mentioned this on, I think prior, prior podcast early, early on, but, and you bring this up a lot, Garrett, that sometimes the awards, because typically the awards go like this, you know, top producer or top producing team, you know, top volume in the office, top GCI, you know, all those metrics that we all use in the real estate sales world. But sometimes they can be confusing. And Garrett, you you have some really great points on this because I agree. Sometimes this can be confusing if you don't understand the context behind how those numbers are achieved. Yeah, I think I think sometimes it'll set a false goal for people where they think that, okay, so to get to be acknowledged in an office, to be acknowledged in my environment, I need to figure out how to get there. At the end of the day, for some of those people, it's it's not really the best thing for them. It's not the best for their business. It's not the best for their necessarily income at the end of the day. It's not the best for their sanity at the end of the day to try to go after some of those goals. Um, they can still be amazingly successful. I would say even more successful in their life without chasing some of those. 
and again, it, you can get kind of lost in it if you don't really know what you're looking at. If you don't really step back and say, okay, well, what is important to me? But man, it feels good to be acknowledged by the office. You know, realtors, people in general respond well to acknowledgement. They respond well to, you know, people pointing them out and saying, look at what John's doing over there. And it's changed. I mean, you have been in a real estate office more recent than I have, at least working in a real estate office or being in one every single day. And I remember as a kid, I grew up in a real estate office and I remember lots of realtors, my mom being one of them, that I would safe to say she probably had 30 or 40 plaques on her wall in her office. Wow. Like it, it was like, and it was just like across the, it was the, the wall was filled with them. And it was like, it was almost like every single year. And she was a good real estate agent. She wasn't a top producer. She wasn't the top volume. She wasn't, you know, all this, but she got a plaque of like excellence in real estate. They hung those things like badges of honor. Like I just remember walls being covered in them. And I remember as a kid walking in being like going in different people's offices going like, whoa, <laughs> they must be doing something right. Like, look at that. <laughs> they must be really good. <laughs> they wow. must be really good. And I think that, um, you know, there are opportunities uh, to acknowledge people in those ways. and do. But I, again, it, it can be misleading to some of these guys that are striving for the acknowledgement. And that that's my, my, usually my biggest concern that comes up with the awards is, uh, you know, what's happening internally in the office? Yeah, well, let's talk about some of the specifics because I think, I mean, there are brokers and owners and managers who are listening to this and maybe we can share some ideas or if you have different ideas, you can share them with us based on what we talk about. But let's talk about what we think actually works and, and where some of the confusion lies. I mean, the first step is differentiating between individual agents and teams and actual teams versus an individual agent who has a team but is considered an individual agent because that's where I think the biggest confusion lies when you have someone sitting there and you've mentioned this Garrett before we were recording going well how how do they do all that volume like if they're just but they have a team don't they and does that mean I need to hire a ton of people to be able to be acknowledged and so if you don't separate that right off the bat that's where I think some people can just go like oh I'm not so sure about this yeah, the platform has to be it has to be even if awards are going to be given. And for the most part, you know, you go back before teams were ever created, it wasn't even play, play, playing field for the most part. Everybody's kind of on their own. Maybe there was a, you know, two people working together. There really weren't big massive teams. Um but even at that, two people working together and they're like, "Oh, that that group over there just got the highest volume." And everybody goes, "Well, of course, it's two agents working together." Like how in the world am I going to win that award? I guess I got to maybe like Someone's going to have to have an accident in the parking lot tonight. Uh, <laughs> so, so I think that like, you know, it, it's got to be an even playing field for these awards to be given out. And the minute the playing field is not even, it can actually cause a lot of turmoil internally in the company because people want those. They want to be acknowledged. Uh, it's a natural thing. So yes, Matt, I think you're right. Even playing field up front has to be started. And then you got to look at, okay, what would be the matrix that you want to track internally now that we have an even playing field? Yeah. And then those metrics, I think, become important. And I don't think that there's a enough uh, utilization of some deeper metrics, maybe because they're hard to calculate and it relies a lot on the honor system. But I mean, typically we see volume and gross commission income because that's easily tracked. I think gross commission income is better than volume as an acknowledgement, hands down, because yeah. those are the people that are creating revenue. Now, that doesn't necessarily measure the impact on clients, though, because if you're selling more homes and putting more happy faces, that's going to impact your transaction numbers and your volume, maybe not your GCI, depending on what you charge. Well, and that's where I get stuck in is like, okay, so when the award is given to push agents to want to be at that level is the is the real focus on bettering the agent or is the real focus on bettering the, the, the higher up in the company? And this is where I think it can get weird is that it's, it's not clear cut. A lot of the agents don't look at it from that perspective. They just want the award. And I think it's really important that you got to step back and look at yourself and say, okay, what are the, what am I trying to get to? But I think the offices have to set up the matrix matrixes so that, it allows people to 
how can we're going back to that even playing field again yeah. because i think you're right gross commission income is one thing volume is one thing but gosh as a as an agent who's building a business and as a owner of a company i actually like how you said like how many happy faces do we have out there mm -hmm. like and i think there's all kinds of awards that can be given around that piece of how many lives did you affect this year how many people were you able to help move from one point to another? Um, I think are now it's a, there's some people out there that are going like, yeah, but that's not business. Business is the numbers and the money and the take home and that piece of it. But I think it's an important piece. I think it's something that can be brought in and be measured. Yeah, I, I agree. And you're right. I mean, the numbers are important. And I don't think that we should ever go away from acknowledging that because if you're making a lot of money, you're probably also creating a lot of impact. I mean, there, yeah. there, there is only so many different things that you can move around on your, you know, commission structures and things to be so diverse that someone's making a ton of money and impacting nobody. And you're only going to sell so many, you know, eight figure houses. <laughs> so I do think that using volume and gross commission income should be there. I think when you start spreading those things out though, too much having, you know, Runner-up, third place, the fourth place, you know, gross commission income in this office, that oh office, gosh. that office. It's just like, all right. I mean, I think it's okay maybe to have those rankings displayed somewhere, but then when you start giving the awards for it, I mean, so you can have the rankings displayed so there's acknowledgement of where people are if that's what you want to do internally. But then when you have the entire brokerage walking across the stage, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why don't we just have right. a parade? Instead. All right, everybody, this is the double fisting moment. Head to the bar, get two drinks, come back and sit down because you're going to be here for a while. Yeah. We're gonna... <laughs> no, We're because gonna they're go... all up on stage. They're not going to be able to do that. There's going to be nobody in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so I do, but I do think that there is a lot of brokerages do do that well, but the more creative stuff and uh, the brokerage that you I was with, this. yeah, the, yeah, you, you mentioned this earlier. The brokerage I was with did this for a couple of years. I, I hope they still do it. But there was, you know, the president's award or you know the founders award or some kind of unique things that there was a subjectiveness to who got that award, which I think is actually kind of cool because it gives you the opportunity to acknowledge people who are doing unique things within the company because maybe there's. Oh, rookie of the year, by the way, love those awards too. People who come in and just like move quickly up to producing and serving people. I wanted to mention that one. I love rookie of the years. But acknowledging somebody who, you know, had a major impact on a family, maybe they went above and beyond on a transaction and everybody knew the story and it was just this amazing moment, like being able to acknowledge that person. Maybe somebody who's dedicated years and years of service to serving a specific niche of people and they do it so well. Um, maybe it's somebody who, I don't know, overcame some personal struggles and has gone through some incredible things in their own life while then also being able to serve at a high level in the business. Things like that, I think, are, are interesting because every year it could be somebody different. It's not like, oh, here comes Gary again. We know he's going to get the award for top producer because, I mean, he has a team of 500 people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and then I, I, I like that idea of getting, as you said, the President Cup Award and those, because again, you get to, that gives the owner of the company or the manager, managers of the company discretion to say, we need to acknowledge people that are showing up and doing what the right stuff. And, and they're, 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 they're going to have these other numbers and they're, they're probably going to hit these volumes and transactions, but to give them that, that like, you're doing the right stuff. Now, I was thinking about this as you were talking because, I know I've talked about Randall O'Dowd up in Seattle before, but uh, Randall last year did, you know, just shy of a half million in income and took 11 weeks off. I think it was like five different countries over the year. I could see an award for that. If I, if he was in my company, I would make an award for highest income while taking the most time off and experiencing life. I would celebrate that but most offices would never celebrate time off. They would never acknowledge somebody for it. But my thing is creating life also. I think you have to have that, like there's, there's so many different ways you can look at, you know, celebrating people's successes. Oh yeah. Well, this goes into, okay. So there is like a hierarchy of who we're serving when it comes to a brokerage, right? Because always the clients are the people that we want to serve. But as a, 
manager or broker owner, your clients are also your agents and we want to serve them well. So what is your mission on helping you serve your agents better? Is it so is it getting them to produce more so you can make more money or is it helping them structure a business that gives them the life that they want? Helping create more millionaires in your company than people who just sell millions of dollars of real estate. Because that's cool. Like what you said with Randall, I mean that's that's incredible. Should be celebrated. Hard to create a metric that is trackable for every agent around income per hour, but that's something that I would definitely try to figure out a way and acknowledge saying, hey, this person over here earned the highest income per hour in our company. They are doing something right. They are efficient. You know, Acknowledging efficiency in the business. This person had the highest amount of testi- five-star testimonials from their clients, unsolicited reviews from their clients. The yeah. highest amount of referrals. Let's look at how where their business comes from. You know, this agent over here got sixty five percent of their business directly from referrals from people they know. That's a cool stat too. That that can actually be tracked. Where is their business coming from? Because especially if you're running a ninja brokerage, acknowledging action because the systems are not about results. They're about the actions that we need to take that lead to results. And so how do you acknowledge somebody who follows the Ninja 9 every day? I mean, granted, they're probably going to be one of the top producers in the company, but you know, look at all the notes that Garrett wrote this year. I would acknowledge that too. Yeah. And again, this, this goes down that fine line, Matt, of what we were talking about earlier, which is the, everybody gets an award. Yes. Um, <laughs> there isn't too so, many column here. Yeah. There, there's a very easy line you cross into of like, all right, so everybody's getting an award today. Like, you know, it turns into almost, and I know this could ruffle some feathers out there, but it turns into kind of the participation award. And it's like, okay, they made a way. So everybody's going to get a plaque. But I do think I, I actually like more so, what you touched on, which is, is that giving the ownership discretion to acknowledge people to, and again, like whether there's a matrix to track, to track, you know, amount of income going along the lines with how many vacation days that they had and, you know, being able to balance an incredible life or sorry, harmonize an incredible life. I think that there's, there's the discretion of the ownership to step back and say, you know, that dude needs to be acknowledged. If I could have, you know, my entire office take eleven weeks off and produce in the range of, you know, four to five hundred thousand, that's a successful brokerage. I could stand behind that and open my doors up every single day and be very happy to say, "This is what I support at my office." Uh, we show you how to do that. We have tools and tricks to make this all work for you. I think there's a great thing that would make people say, "This these guys actually celebrate us having a life." Where I think a lot of the awards don't acknowledge that and they make some people push themselves to extreme levels just trying, trying, trying to beat out somebody that's almost, you're not going to beat them out. The individual agent that's trying to compete with a team that's doing $100 million in one year in a marketplace that's selling $500,000 homes. Tough. Yep. (laughs) Real tough. (laughs) Real tough. Doable. It's possible. It It is possible. It, I mean, it is possible, but there at some point there, if you're doing that on your own and trying to compete with those numbers, there are going to be sacrifices that are going to have to happen that you might do it and be like, whew, I did it. I don't ever want to do that again. Like that wasn't fun. Yeah. Well, so I, I think with, when it comes to awards, my personal opinion is there needs to be a blend of acknowledgement of numbers and performance, you know, volume, GCI, whichever metric you want to use as a brokerage. I think there needs to be a a discretionary award that's done by the leadership to acknowledge people that they feel have done something exceptional that doesn't fit into a specific category. And then having maybe an award or two based on, you know, this person's doing the right thing. There's some type of action that's being measured in order to show here's, here's the type of agents that we like to see at our company. But then you have to make sure you're not putting too many awards out there. Because if if half the company is getting an award, and I'm not talking about necessarily production clubs, because that's a whole different thing. But if half the company is getting an award and you have a big company, that's probably too many. I, I just, you know, there's a reason why there are awards. There's a reason why there is first place, because 
that is reserved for the person who is the best at whatever that metric is. I mean, there's gold, silver, and bronze in the Olympics, period. And I've heard it described as, you know, the difference of a lean in the 100-meter dash is greatest guy in the world, nobody. Yep, that's exactly the way it is. And I think that you, you do need to acknowledge excellence. It's, it's, it's because, and, it, and also, it's, it's, sometimes it's really fine numbers. And there's people that had incredible, incredible businesses, but they just didn't get that one last closing in. You know, and that difference of, you know, somebody making 800000 in income or making eight hundred and you know 20000 in income or doing, you know, 50 million in volume and doing 50, you know, million, 500,000 in volume. It can be very, very, very small numbers, but there it is good to acknowledge that top, top, top producer and say like they yeah. they crushed it. And if there is a way to acknowledge net income, you know, if you can get people to you know track their expenses and stuff and acknowledge the net income because that's another measure of you know margins and efficiency and performance, I think that would be really cool too. But Garrett, so that that's kind of the award side of things. But when we talk about acknowledging people, it's not always about the awards, too. Like, I think about the celebrations that companies have. Like, the party after the awards banquet is usually the best part. <laughs> anyway, that's what everybody wants to go to. They want to get to the open bar, the live music, if that's what your company does. You know, or other things. I mean, I, I saw a video out there. I forget the, the company, um, but they had such a great track record over 10 years that they gave bonuses out to everybody. And like major bonuses that they'd never done before, life changing bonuses, like in some cases, six figure bonuses to people. And these people were crying because they just wanted to ignore, and everybody got something based on how long they were at the company. And that's not an award, that's not a participation trophy. That's a, we acknowledge you as the ownership and leadership for everything that you've done for this company. And we want to give back to you because there's more ways to acknowledge people than giving people an award. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with that, Matt. And uh, and I don't see companies necessarily do it enough where they, they just take... And personally, for me, that's where a culture comes from an office. It's not the award ceremony night. It's all the little things that they do throughout the year that stop and acknowledge their agents and bring that, that love and energy into that office. And that's actually the stuff that makes people rise up the most. It's the stuff that makes people show up the most is when there's those moments of acknowledgement just over time. And whether it's a party, an event, or if it's an appreciation for the, their employees where everybody gets to go on a wine tasting or something like that, or whatever it might look like, bonuses are great. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's something somebody can walk home to their family and sit there and say, you're not going to believe what happened today. You know, it wasn't announced publicly. It wasn't like a big ordeal but they walked in and sat me down or called me into the main office and acknowledged me for what I was doing and said thank you and gave me a bonus. I I think that is life-changing for a lot of people. A little extra money they didn't realize it was coming in, paychecks that you know haven't closed yet that they've mentally already spent. Oh yeah. I mean it nice. I think that's that is that component that company that did that. I'll have to look it up, and maybe I'll mention it on the next podcast after I do the research on it <laughs> this time. That was incredible. But I think acknowledgement versus handing out awards is what will get people to stay at a brand as well. Because you're right, Garrett. It creates the culture, and I think of companies that do it really well, where you know you can take company A and company B, and they both have a warehouse and warehouse workers, and people think like, "Wow, warehouse not that glamorous," but you have company A. Their employees are pumped. They're excited to go to work. They're excited to put on the the t-shirts of the brand. And then you have company B where they're like, it's a job. Yeah. The brokerages where I see the agents acting as brand ambassadors for that brokerage. Now I get it. The clients that you work with are working with you and you have to develop your personal brand and that matters a whole lot. But if you're pumped to put your company's logo on your hat or on your jacket, or in some cases on your car or whatever it is, like that's speaking to the company culture of like, hey, we're doing something right. These people are excited to be here. And I think as leaders of an organization, you need to find out how you want, you know, first you got to figure out what culture you want to have and then figure out a way, how do we acknowledge this throughout the year, Garrett? You were right on that. Like it's not just in that moment during awards season, giving everybody acknowledgement. It's throughout the year, making sure the the agents feel 
acknowledged and welcome and excited to be there. So let's look at it from this way. So if you're a real estate agent and you're going, well, how do I create that energy in my database, in my sphere of influence? We have a system. It's called the Ninja Nine. You know, we teach it in Ninja Coaching as the weekly routine of here's your weekly routine, the things you got to do that turn these people into raving fans of yours. They love you. They're thrilled to be a part of your world. And when real estate comes up, they call you and they're like, hey, I need your help. Or, hey, can you help my friend? It's, it's, it works. We watch it work every single day. As long as I've been doing this, it just works. The interesting part is that internally in companies, they, they get very big about that big reward at the end of the year or the award ceremony to kind of build up and build that, that energy in their people, where the reality is, is that they need to do the same thing as the agents are doing to their database, and they should use the Ninja 9. Sometimes that acknowledgement is no different than a handwritten note, just saying, hey, crushed that listing uh, opportunity the other day. Way to go. Really fun to watch you grow over the years. You're really turning into an incredible real estate agent asset to you know, our, our company. And thank you so much. There's moments that they can stop and do it. But it's the Ninja 9. You know, if you really want to like create a fun culture and really build up that energy in your company, take the Ninja 9 as a manager and as an owner, look at all your agents and say, all right, this is my job now to do with them every single day. Yeah. It's not like, again, has to be an award or has to be a bonus. Sometimes it's just going and sitting out their desk being like, how's your day going? What are you up to? It's an acknowledgement. That's what people want. They want to be acknowledged. Well, I think it starts by understanding as a owner or broker, what is your mission with your agents? Is it like, are you just building a company so that people can sell more real estate? Or are you trying to build leaders in the industry? Are you trying to impact these people's lives in incredible ways so they can take 11 weeks of vacation. Because if your intent is in the right place, we talked about intent before, that's going to make all the difference. And I looked it up. St. John Properties, which is headquartered in Maryland, last month, you can go see early December, there's a bunch of news articles. You could probably just type into Google, real estate company gives bonus. And there's a video of these people's reactions. And it's pretty awesome. So I highly recommend everybody go look that up. St. John's Properties, bonuses. Great. Nice. Nice. You got me lost because I was sitting here sitting going like, how does he look things up and talk at the same time, dude? I couldn't do that. I'm really impressed with you. Well, I looked it up while you were talking. <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. Way to go. I was like, you oh, where it doesn't say anything or ask me a question because I'm typing into Google right now. <laughs> how do you feel about that, Matt? Uh, what? what? It's, like, it's like getting caught in a classroom when you're like not paying attention. Sleeping? <laughs> yeah. Garrett, what do you think? Huh? <laughs> yeah. The answer is B. <laughs> well, so, right. so Garrett, I mean, any other unique ways that you've seen or heard of people giving acknowledgement or awards or things that maybe for the brokers and owners that are listening, they should consider or think about? Well, again, I, I want to go back to first things first. Make sure you're doing the Ninja 9 in your company. Let's just start start with that. If you're not doing that, don't focus on any other big awards or big wins or stuff. I mean, start real small and just do the basics. Because again, Matt, as you were talking, it's the difference of an agent that says, I don't have time to do the Ninja 9 because I need to find some transactions right now. And I think there's a lot of owners and managers that are like, I don't have time to do that because I got to run this company. Um, I got to make sure this thing is going. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like that's what you're missing. That, that's what this is all about is you need to make the time because that's what's going to make everything rise to a different level that it's not at right now. So I think the acknowledgement and the wins and the, and the acknowledging successes needs to happen every single day on the ground to build a really, really, really solid company so that when you get to the award ceremony time, that is not the one key factor that makes people go, oh, they, they, they acknowledged me with half the other room going like, crap, I didn't get an award. So that, I mean, that's where I come from, Matt. And that's where I, I see the boat miss bigger than any like event you could be doing throughout the year. It's the little stuff that adds up all throughout the year that needs to be done. I agree 100%. And I, and I would caution brokers that exclusively use numbers as awards and just you know simple rankings because those agents can go get ranked at other companies too. They can go win the top producer award at your competitor. And so what is the unique 
acknowledgement and award that you provide that makes people want to get that award at your company, not just get that award? Because I could be a top producer anywhere, right? <laughs> you could you could go find the right company and be like, well, if I go there, they don't really have a lot of good agents. I could be the top producer and get that award over there. Or maybe it's going to another place because those top producers are really good, which is going to encourage me and challenge me to do even better because I've just been sitting on the top here all the time. Like maybe maybe I'm not that good. I don't know. I don't think any agent would be saying that. But well, and I and I just heard of an office just recently that uh, you know one of their awards is that they're going to you know give a trip to uh, Las Vegas, all expenses paid for hitting certain numbers and things like that. I think those are fun. And I think it, it provides some energy. You can't have that be the reason though, that my office is different and unique. And this is why people come in and work here. Cause Matt, you're, you're right. Is that they can take that business. They, they, that's their business and they can take that and get that award somewhere else. It can't just be about those awards. It's gotta be about that internal culture that makes them stay. Um, and lights them up every single day. Yeah, and the opportunity to achieve more too. Because like, I think that if if everybody has the opportunity to do something, like the Las Vegas thing, when you mentioned it to me, and like, well, depending on how they track and everything, it's still kind of unique. I mean, that's not something that every brokerage does. And it is a chance for everybody because it's based on actions that they do. It's a chance for everybody to get that. It's not just, oh, well, Garrett's going to get that because he's the top producer. I will say yeah. I, the trip though made re- reminded me of something interesting because there's culture that can be created among things outside. And I'm just going to mention this real quick because it's not necessarily the same topic, but a client of mine got a trip to Mexico from his lender because the lender sent all of his top agents that he works with to Mexico, all expenses paid. And I was like, wow, that encourage that would be that's like an encouragement because it's like hey that's a great acknowledgement this is a fun trip and it would encourage me to do more business with that lender because this is pretty cool especially if the lender is good i mean if, if he's not good at what he does that's a different story but clearly good at what he does if he has good or, good or bad man i'm going to mexico <laughs> well there you go so <laughs> companies well think about other sales companies like i think about pharmaceutical sales companies they're famous for this giving trips to people who hit specific numbers. Oh, you got up to this club. You're going to get the Bahama trip and we're going to go down there and it's going to be a great time and everything. And that actually worked really well. A lot of my friends stayed at companies that they're like, I don't know, but we get these cool trips. I want to go. So there's a lot of unique things you can do. I've got a, I've got a friend right now. His wife works for an investment company. And he said, what they do is they hand you a book at the beginning of the year and it's full of vacations. And as long as you hit your numbers, you get to pick a trip. It's kind of cool. He's like, we're heading to the Bahamas here coming up. And he goes, and she's got two more trips that we just get to go and pick. It's all of our airfare, all of our food, all of our lodging. We just get to go and have fun. And he talks about it like she has the best job in the world. And he was so excited telling me about this trip to the Bahamas coming up. And I was like going like, we're trying to like share stories and stuff. And then he's like, yeah, we're not really going to get to do, because when I travel, I like to do like the get into the villages and all of a sudden be one of the locals. It's like, we're not going to get to do that. He goes, but let me point out that the entire thing is paid for. <laughs> I was like, okay, you win, dude. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, and that sounds like a company. And if she has the best job in the world, sounds like the internal culture is really good. And that's what's driving the company to then think about like, hey, Let's acknowledge our employees in a in a different way and help them create life for themselves and say, hey, I want to thank you for your production by giving you a vacation because you deserve time off versus here's a plaque. Now get out there and sell some more houses. Yeah. Do you want the plaque again next year? Come on. Go for it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, back to work now. <laughs> award season takes place about a month into the year. Where are we at right now? Because if you want this plaque again, you got to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they should hand that out with the with the black. Uh, <laughs> you want it again? Here's oh, here's man. where you stand. Oh, okay, we're we're going down a black hole right now. So I do think again, there's lots of ways you can acknowledge people, and there's not lots of ways you can build up a company. And um, and again, I think so much pressure gets put into these these awards and these plaques and these award ceremonies, and I think they need to be done the right way. They don't need to make everybody sit there and fall asleep at the dinner table while all these awards are giving out. I think there's the right ones. And I think the bigger picture is what is your acknowledgement and what is your plan to acknowledge the people that are making your business work throughout the entire year, every single day. And it doesn't have to be big gifts. It doesn't have to be big stuff, but it has to be acknowledgement 
to make them know that they are appreciated, to make them know that you're, you are, you know, supportive of their energy that they put out, that you're thankful for the time they give from their families to be able to do this and to be able to help the bigger picture. Like there's a lot there that needs to be acknowledged that I think that gets overlooked more than anything and tries to get made up for in a little plaque at the end of the year. And that's my two cents. I agree. So I will throw out there too, that if anybody has some unique experiences of, of unique awards or acknowledgements or things that are going on out there, I would like to highlight those. I, th- I think it's important for brokerages to be acknowledged as well if they're doing some really cool things to acknowledge those brokers. And there's there's no real awards or acknowledgements for brokerages aside from kind of the numbers. I mean, I think each grouping has their own kind of like awards things like leading real estate companies of the world has different things and, and stuff. But I, I think that acknowledgement can spread to us too. I mean, we want to acknowledge our listeners with the test with the reviews that we talked about. And I would like to acknowledge some brokerages. I don't know how we'll do it, but I think I would like to know about them so that maybe I'll just write them a note. I don't know. But yeah, I would love to do it too, because there's some there's two sides to it. And you talk about brokerages. There's the big, big, big brokerages that are out there. Then there's some right now that I'm watching that I'm really impressed with. Uh, the way that they are showing up and taking care of their clients. And again, we'll get to a point of acknowledging these companies that are doing it because I'm some of them I'm blown away by. And then there's some of these little boutique offices that you know are you know 30 agents or maybe even smaller than that that are providing such a high level of service and such an amazing impact in their communities that um, I think those need to be acknowledged also. I'd love to, if anybody wants to nominate somebody and tell them why, especially a small smaller brokerage, I would love to know. Tell, tell us what's going on and what they're doing internally that makes them that special and that unique and that different. Oh, and then, uh, we maybe can- next year we'll have the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast Award Ceremony. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna need like four hours <laughs> because everybody's walking across the stage <laughs> everybody tune in we're gonna have a four hour long podcast where we're gonna acknowledge everybody oh man sorry i, I had do, to throw that out there i know i do think though that we could though um really I, but i would love i'd love to know why like that's my biggest thing if someone's gonna reach out to us and share a company and say this company needs to be acknowledged um i definitely want to know why? What is the big picture behind that makes them different? And I, there are some very cool, again, large companies out there and boutique companies out there that um, really are setting a standard for what we want to see in real estate. No doubt. All right. Well, this is good, Garrett. Thank you. This was fun talking about awards and acknowledgement. And, and I want to acknowledge you, Garrett, for showing up every episode. And I appreciate that. I don't have an award for you, but I want to acknowledge you. <laughs> if if you ever if you guys ever hear Matt just talking by himself, that means that I did not show up, and vice versa. <laughs> oh man, so funny! All right, well, as always, thank you everybody out there who's listening. We're loving the feedback that we're getting on uh, testimonials and uh, you know people's feedback on the podcast, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to share some of those. And we also have some cool things coming up here um, in the near future that we're getting excited to. Um, to acknowledge. So in future podcasts, just pay attention because we've got some other little things are going to be throwing your guys way a little bit more value and um, yeah, more stuff to hopefully make your guys' world better. So thanks so much, Matt. Thank you and appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Have an awesome day. Thank you for joining us here on the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast. We appreciate your time and attention. If you receive some value out of this episode, we would love for you to share it, subscribe to the podcast, and if you feel so compelled, to leave us a review. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.